This tank just went from a shrimp tank to a beta tank real quick. Yeah, this white one is kind of cool. Looks like a cow. Oh yeah, that's a crown tail. <laughs> It's awesome to see everybody else out there, you know, supporting us and, you know, spending their money at our stores and, you know, doing the right thing. It's a female. What do you think? So if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that this tank right here used to have some steel nebula guppies from a buddy of mine in town here, uh, John. Big shout out to John. But uh, for the longest time, it's just had some cherry shrimp. Yeah, believe it or not, there's a ton of cherry shrimp in here. And then a bunch of snails. You see all these Malaysian trumpet snails. Um, there's actually a mystery snail. There's a big Malaysian trumpet snail. There's also an assassin snail down here. There's one of the cherry shrimp I'm talking about. There's a bunch of them in here. But it's time to clear out some of these plants and make it a perfect home for a betta fish or a beta fish. There may be some debate about today's video, but it's not gonna be the whole beta versus beta thing. Uh, this will be the first time I've kept one of these fish since I was a kid, and when I was a kid, I kept it in a little tiny hexagon thing that was probably like one-tenth of a gallon. So we're gonna give it this nice 10-gallon, well-established tank, heavily planted. It's gonna have no other fish. It's gonna be a little paradise. I don't have a bunch of money to spend on a really expensive one or go to a breeder, and I really don't know that much about them. I kinda of just want a pretty fish, and I think they're you know cool looking, and I think this is gonna be the perfect habitat. So my choice was like a Petco, PetSmart, or a Walmart, or you know, a local fish store. A few things went into my decision, but in the end I decided not to rescue a fish from a Walmart or a PetSmart and a Petco. And let me explain why. I'm sure you guys have seen the videos out there just like me where people go and they rescue uh, fish from a big box store, whether it be you know Petco, PetSmart, or Walmart. I decided against that route because I think spending my money at any place that doesn't treat their fish well is a bad idea. It's definitely complicated and it was definitely a tough decision to make because I went to my local Walmart first to look at their fish, their beta fish, and um, at the end of the day, like I said, I decided against it. It was especially tough seeing the condition some of the fish were in and knowing that some of them were probably going to die. We're big fans of rescue and adoption. Both of our dogs are adopted. They're both mutts that we just rescued. And I mean, I'm a mutt myself and I'm adopted. So I'm about as pro-adoption and pro-rescue as you can get. And there is no doubt that when you purchase a fish that's in poor health from a big box store and you nurse it back to health, that you give that fish a better life and you are doing a good thing. No doubt about that whatsoever. However, whenever someone does take that action, there's other reactions that happen because of that. I happen to have a, uh, a relative who works in the fish department at a big box store, and I took this footage from his office not too long ago. Hey Pete, it's Fred over in Fish, man. Did you get the latest quarterly numbers? They're in the toilet. Literally, there is no sales in fish whatsoever. They're stale. I mean, if it goes on this pace, we're gonna have to get out of the fish game. I, I mean, have you seen these videos lately? You got big YouTubers going to Europe, showing how it's done, how to really run a fish store. I mean, no one wants to come and buy our fish anymore. Between you and me, man, I got my resume out there. I think I might get fired. You know, the sales have been flat for the last six quarters straight. I feel like I'm all alone over here, just like, you know, getting bombed on, you know, just so low. We were putting in so much hard work, you know, getting all these fish and putting as many fish as we can into our tanks, but uh, they just haven't been selling. You know, we've been dying off, we've been losing money hand over fist, and we just gotta get out of this fish game. Shortly after that footage was taken, a video went viral where someone rescued a, a beta fish from the store where he works. A few million people saw it, and then a bunch of those people went out and spent their hard-earned money to rescue fish from said big box store. Shortly after that, this footage was taken. Have you seen the latest reports? The numbers just came in from the last quarter, and the numbers are amazing, my friend. I'm gonna get my maid a maid. I'm getting a promotion. The family's going on a vacation. The stock price is through the roof. How's Europe this time of year? I think I'm just gonna use my dividends to pay for it. Our department's expanding, man. If you want a job, we're hiring over here. They just gave everybody raises across the board in the fish department. It's, it's, it's bananas, man. It's awesome. It just really feels great that, you know, my fellow aquarists are really supportive and we're on the same page, you know, and they come, you know, spend their money at our stores. It's just like you and I, I know you got that school of baller sharks in that 20 gallon, but it's just awesome to see everybody else out there, you know, supporting us and, you know, spending their money at our stores and, you know, doing the right thing. My point in making this video isn't to shame the people that go out and spend their money at a, at a store that consistently doesn't take care of their fish. I simply want to spread the message and the other side of the coin that, you know, what can actually happen when you go ahead and you spend your money at these places. It'd be different if you were getting, you know, a free rescue fish off of Craigslist or if the store said to you, hey, listen, we're in over ahead and we have some free sick fish. Would you take them? 
I know that whenever someone does that, they're doing it from the bottom of their heart, which is awesome. I just ask that next time you do it, consider spending your money at a local fish store or a place of business that can consistently takes good care of their fish and puts their money back into that. As I mentioned earlier, it's super complicated and I'm sure there's even more things that I'm not aware of, but drop a comment down below. You know, what's your opinion? Have you done this before? You know, what do you think? Am I missing something? Maybe there's something I'm missing. Let me know in the comments below. So that's what we ended up not doing and not where we got our betta fish, but let's jump and take a look where we got our betta fish, an awesome local fish store called Pet Bazaar. What do you think? Hmm? This one right here? Is that the one you're leaning towards? <laughs> what do you think? This one? The fins on this one look nice. <laughs> and on this one. This one looks more like a ball ballerina flowy. This one is not as big, but the fins look more like precise. And then this one, I, I like, like the, the color. Flowing. This one, I like the color big time, but he's not like flaring up. I want to see what the fins are. But yeah, no, this flaring was nice. They have the like a more multicolored. It's a crown tail. Oh yeah, it's a crown tail. <laughs> it's just sitting there. Yeah. You can't tell in some of them because they're just sitting there. Yeah, that one's awesome. Yeah. Just can't tell. I want to. I really want to see this red one flared up. Like I think this one is like really cool. Is this the one you liked? Oh, no, this is the one. Down there. Yeah, and and he's active too. It's probably good. I mean, I think the, the fins, I don't know, I mean, we're not experts. The fins are probably not perfect, but, because you see how when it's fanned out, like that spot's missing, like those chunks are missing, but, what do you think? It's a female. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some, some of them you really can't tell, but most of them you can. Like, the only one that I really care that I really want to tell is this one. I really want it. I would like to see this one flared up. Which one? It's like not moving much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this white one is kind of cool. Looks like a cow. Yeah, from, that, and from that Yeah, but you can't see. Yeah. They're yeah. not helping themselves. Oh, yeah, that one I don't like. I'm not a big fan of that one anymore. I mean, I don't know, based on, I think your original pick, because it's, it's the most active, it looks the most healthy, too. It does. I mean, they all look healthy, Out of the but... ones that we like? Yeah. None of them that one's just kind of sitting there, it's cheaper. Yeah. But that's fun. Well, he built a bubble, <laughs> well, he built, he built a bubble nest, too, which is actually a healthy thing. These are healthy. They're building a bubble nest that's like a breeding thing. So... I don't know, what do you think? So we made it back to the fish cave. Here's our new beta buddy. Um, we also picked up a, uh, a, another CPO, a Mexican dwarf crayfish. But um, let's get this guy into his new home. We're gonna do a quick little rescape. Now, this tank, like I said, I've had this tank for a long time. Actually, one of my favorite plants is a crypt, a really big crypt that's back there that we can't even see. So I'm just gonna really quickly take out most of this guppy grass. That's what's kind of filling up. This is, my, I think, some anacaris, anacris, whatever it's called. So I'm gonna wipe out most of that and let's see what this tank looks like and then uh, get our new buddy in there. Here's a quick look from the top. As you can see, there's actually some, uh, some floaters in here. There's some dwarf water lettuce, some wisteria, and then like I said, a bunch of this guppy grass. Let's just take a few handfuls of this guppy grass out of here. So here's all the guppy grass and a little bit of the other uh, plant we took out of there. Uh, as you can see, even from the top down, it looks totally different. See an assassin snail down there. We left some of the floaters there. And then let's take a look down and see what it looks like from here. And boom, much cleaner. Let me move the, uh, the light back over a little bit um, just so we can give an idea of. Now I think our new beta friend will have a plenty of room to swim around in. Doesn't have a name yet. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna let the, the wife pick out a name. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, definitely drop them in the comments down below and uh, maybe we'll pick one from there. Let's get this guy acclimated. We're just gonna float him here for a little bit, get the temperature acclimated, and then kind of do like a plop and drop. Let me know down below, what kind of tail is this? I know the tail looks like a little beat up. Is this a double tail, a full moon tail? I, the only thing I know is not as a crown tail. It's the only tail I know. Um, but I'm gonna get some better footage, obviously, once we get him in the tank. Um, but if you guys can tell what type of beta this is, beta this is, let me know. We're gonna test and see if our new beta friend likes shrimp or not. As you can see, there's definitely some shrimp in here. So we'll see if, uh, I mean, there's probably hundreds, so there's no way he's gonna be able to take out the whole population. But uh, he won't go hungry, that's for sure. Well, we're almost ready to uh, release the guy into the tank, and I 
I think we answered the question of whether he's gonna be a shrimp hunter or not. Cause if you guys can see, there's like some shrimp that have been swimming around his uh, container and he's been picking at them. So not only is he a shrimp hunter, he's currently hungry and on the hunt. I mean, there's this, these shrimp, I think especially since I removed some of that guppy grass, I actually put a little bit back in, but these shrimp are just cruising all over the place. All right, it's time to transfer the beta into the tank. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. We don't want any of the water from the store into our tank. So we're gonna do this and then bring this over. Let's see if we can't get the release here. Come on, buddy. There we go. And we're clear. So what do you guys think? Let's put the top on. Oh, he's literally already attacking shrimp. <laughs> this shrimp just, or this tank just went from a shrimp tank to a beta tank real quick. Once again, I'm really well aware that the beta is gonna attack the shrimp. I'm not too worried about it. If the beta wants to eat shrimp all day and I don't feed him at all and he has live fish or live food and he's eating shrimp, I'm happy with that. If you guys know about beta genetics, beta genetics, let me know. Will this guy stay this color? I know that some different, well, some will change colors over time, but this guy maybe get more blue, more red, you know, he's gonna turn into a, a frog. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm extremely happy that we ended up with this guy for a number of reasons. I got to share some time with my wife at a pet store, which is awesome. She got excited about the hobby a little more, which is awesome. We got a great deal in my opinion. I got to spend some money at a place I hope to patronize many more times. They have awesome prices. If you're in the Central Florida area, Pet Bazaar and Castleberry is where it's at. Think twice about where you spend your money, guys. Rescue or not. As always, stay positive and stay passionate. <laughs> Like, what are they doing? <laughs> They're just chilling. He's not even blinking. Like, who doesn't blink? <laughs> Interesting. I'm gonna move for two seconds and then it takes up again. Whoa. It's funny.